Jesus and the Dunker. As we've mentioned several times before in this series, scholars believe that the pre-Paschal Jesus, right? We're talking about Jesus stage one, before Mark stage three, before John stage three. Stage one. That's the actual historical situation of Jesus. The pre-Paschal Jesus became a disciple of John the Dunker after his dunking by John. How long? Could be years. And during that time, he was preaching John the Dunker's message of metanoia and dunking others. John 3.22 After this, Jesus and his disciples went into the Judean countryside and he spent some time there with them and dunked. Now that's very clearly different. All of the communities, including John, Mark, Matthew, and Luke too, downplay Jesus' association with the dunker. They, they omit that he was a disciple. But there's these little tales that you can find, okay, that are fossilized remnants of that stage one situation. Over the course of time, scholars tell us that the pre-Paschal Jesus began, stage one gospel development, began to discover a new ministry for himself, a Jesus movement. According to Mark, Jesus embarked upon it after John the Dunker was arrested. Mark chapter 1, verse 14. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. And it makes sense, even though this is a stage 3, it make, that's more in line with what the actual stage 1 situation was. Why would Jesus dishonor his master by, by making a movement while he's still alive? That'd be very dishonorable. But if the master dies or is arrested and incapacitated, then Jesus would pick it up, right? Discern that from God? The theme of Jesus' preaching is quite similar to that of John the Dunker's. Mark chapter 1, verse 15, Jesus said, The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come very near. That's how we learn. Where do we learn, Rosalinda? What Jesus' gospel is, is right there encapsulated in Mark chapter 1, verse 15. Repent, metanoite. Put on a new mind, metanoia, and believe in the good news. Jesus invites his listeners, peasants primarily, to give undivided loyalty to the God of Israel, whose definitive reign is about to begin. Modern believers are amazed that people Jesus invites, these four men, to join him, seem to drop everything on the spot and follow him immediately. Right? Does that make any sense? They don't know this guy from Adam. He comes along, boom, just going to drop everything, right? Just like that. It's all the more amazing if this is the first time they have met each other. Cultural background and information shed light on this story. It is highly likely that in stage one of gospel development, the actual situation of the pre-Paschal Jesus, the pre-Paschal Jesus and the four men, Andrew, Peter, James, and John, that he summons in Mark were not strangers. In fact, they weren't his disciples first until after the resurrection. They were his co-workers, his followers, and co-workers. In order for them to be disciples, he would have to start to get recognized as someone who teaches. Right? And he did that, but that was outside of his honor status as a Galilean day laborer. But clearly he did some things that were amazing. Healings. So be recognized as a folk healer, empowered by God to proclaim theocracy, a prophet. Unlikely though it may be, being a Galilean day laborer peasant, but not a teacher. By the time you get to John, that's primarily what Jesus is with these long-winded discourses that sound very strange to the synoptic Jesus who talks in pithy little stories. <clears throat> if Peter, Andrew, James, and John had not personally met Jesus before this time, they were aware of each other's aspirations and objectives. 
News traveled very quickly in the ancient world thanks to the Gossip Network. There's a strange guy from Nazareth here. He was associated with the Dunker. So what can be gleaned from the very different Markin and Johannine accounts of Jesus recruiting his first followers about the Jesus of history, the peasant village artisan, moving from Nazareth, an insignificant hamlet of a village, to Capernaum, a hub of activity on the Sea of Galilee at the crossroads of major highways. His presence and activity would have stirred curiosity and become the topic of gossip. He does not seem to have gone there to seek work as a village artisan. Instead, Jesus appears to be seeking people to join him in a common venture. Gathering a following is a common occurrence in the Mediterranean world. Technically, a group that gathers for a specific purpose for a limited time is called a coalition. The coalition that Jesus gathers is technically called a faction, a political faction, because it focuses on a central person who holds and controls the loyalty of the group. Invariably, the faction leader has a grievance and gathers around him others who share this grievance. What were the grievance and the aspirations, objectives, and hopes of these peasant fishermen who joined Jesus' faction? All these day laborers together. Well, these are never spelled out in the Gospel accounts. Because remember, the Gospel accounts are, assume you know, and they're coming from much later. 70 Common Era Mark, 85, 90 Matthew Luke, 100 John. Much later, they are stage three perspectives. New problems have arisen in the communities. The facts are this, and this was known, that Jesus was known as the son of an artisan, a, day, a peasant day laborer, and that these first four members of his group were also peasant day laborers, fishermen, therefore make it probable that they found common cause in the oppressive difficulties of their daily lives. Does that sound reasonable? Such experiences would be the underpinning for Jesus' broader project of proclaiming the reign of God, Israelite theocracy. God, the authentic patron or father of Israel. In societies where central government is weak, people have to develop more reliable ways of meeting their daily needs, getting their daily bread, and having their debts canceled. Sound familiar? As we've been seeing, reading John, patronage is such a system in the Mediterranean world. Jesus, the Mediterranean Israelite, first century Galilean day laborer peasant, is now being seen as a broker with alternate reality, with holy and absolute mystery, with God, the patron of Israel. People with means, patrons, are expected to help those with less or no means clients, like fishermen. Many with surplus, however, were greedy and refused to play the role of patron. Remember this story, Luke chapter 12, verse 15 to 21. Then he said to the crowd, Jesus, take care to guard against all greed. For though one may be rich, one's life does not consist of possessions. How do you think Jesus would feel in 2018 United States? where the wealthy just made enough money in 2017 to literally destroy and end all of the most serious forms of poverty worldwide. One year. Wipe it out! Not all poverty. The most drastic. But that's okay because some of these people are Christian, right? Okay, moving right along. Then he, Jesus, told them a parable. There was a rich man, a greedy man, whose land produced a bountiful harvest. He asked himself, what shall I do? <coughs> For I do not have space to store my harvest. It's obvious what you should do, right? 
you have to share your surplus and be a godfather, a patron. And he said, this is what I shall do. I shall tear down my barns and build larger ones. There I shall store all my grain and other goods. And I shall say to myself, now as for you, you have so many good things stored up for many years. Rest, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, you fool. This night your life will be demanded of you. And the things you've prepared, to whom will they belong? Thus will it be for the one who stores up treasure for himself, but is not rich in what matters to God. Because many with surplus were greedy and refused to play the role of patron, the prepaschal Jesus was prompted to point to God as the only reliable patron for Israel. Theocracy was imminent. Repent and believe in the gospel. Jonah and Zebedee, the fathers of Peter and Andrew and James and John, who were the partners in the Jonah Zebedee fishing syndicate, had to hire more day laborers to replace their sons who followed Jesus. They calculated that this short-term gamble might improve their lot if Jesus the broker could deliver what he promised. Western believers, when we read these stories or hear them read at Mass, we like to romanticize Jesus' call to his first followers. Turn Jesus into something ridiculous. A Jesus, a care, but beyond charismatic, a care bear that just pops out of, out of thin air and nothing, and who cannot change the status quo, who the world cannot be changed by. But we sure feel so nice and cinnamon candy inside. <laughs> Cultural insights demonstrate that issues of livelihood were at stake with the call of his first followers. What real life issues in America prompt people today, folks, to follow Jesus with undivided loyalty. I got that question for you. If you follow Jesus with undivided loyalty, are you going to be racist? Are you going to sit down on a throne of your own stubbornness and hard heart and insist that racism only means bigotry to bl this group, blacks or this group, and not accept that racism is more extensive and includes support of unjust systems that keep people down? We got to think about this. What does it mean to serve Jesus with undivided loyalty? What does it mean to live and breathe Jesus today? What it means to a lot of people is to try to find meaning in a disruptive world. And they want to join be part of a group that helps them to feel whole. And that's where it stops. Yeah. Can I be whole, truly healed, if you're not whole? and truly healed everybody can i be whole if i'm tribal if i'm over in the left the left politically and just hanging around people who are yes men to me is that healing tribalism in america or on the other side the right that's not the work of jesus folks and you have people on both on all extremes claiming jesus as their own representative as their own model this is identity theft, folks. Metanoite. And believe in the gospel. Hey, thanks for watching. Just continue the playlist for the next part of the study. If you have further questions, this is good. They will get addressed, so keep watching. If you found value, please subscribe, like, and share. As always, questions, comments, and criticisms are most welcome. God bless you.